The storms in Britain never seem to end, while America has experienced bitterly cold conditions. Chicago is used to freezing winters, but data taken from this weather station shows that it's been one of the coldest on record. And the same is true across many other parts of the United States. So the big question is whether this can be explained by natural variability or whether something has gone wrong with our weather. Some scientists are worried that the recent warming in the Arctic has shifted the main system that drives weather patterns in northern Europe and North America. A current of fast flowing air in red and green called the jet stream. This year it's dipped down lower than usual which has meant weather has stayed the same for weeks on end, keeping the cold weather in North America and the storms over Britain. At a science meeting in Chicago, Jennifer Francis has presented new evidence that in recent years these dips have been deeper and they've been happening more often. I think we can expect more of the same and I think we should expect it to um, occur more frequently it being these very wavy patterns in the jet stream that tend to result in weather conditions being very persistent in one place and so it seems like your weather is kind of stuck for a long time. I do think that's going to happen more often in the future. It's too soon to tell whether this shift in the jet stream is permanent or whether it's a direct result of man-made climate change. But the new research does suggest we may have to get used to winters where spells of weather go on for weeks or even months. Pramod Ghosh, BBC News, Chicago. This is one for the record. I'm Diane, and today is February 17, 2014. Here are your news updates for today. At the end, I'm attaching uh, the SLU uh, channel, and uh, I was watching and re trying to uh, mirror what happened, but actually nothing happened. So they lost the uh, potentially dangerous uh, asteroid, I guess. That was a waste of time. But you can watch it if you want. It might be very interesting for you. And uh, here are your news updates for today. We tried. All right. The watchers watching the world. Volcanoes, including Mount Hood, can go from dormant to active quickly. Federal court deals blow to net neutrality, threatening future of freely accessible unbiased information. Asteroid 2000 EM26 on close approach tonight. Alrighty then. We didn't see anything. I physically just ran out and kept looking also. I don't know. Didn't seem like anything was out there. Any news, energy news. US Canada, nothing new see nothing new on Fukushima. CNN Alarm due to radiation spike brings first of its kind response at US nuclear site. Is there a can up there? Inspections canceled. No one able to enter facility due to high radiation levels. Reuters. Plans got called off over safety thing. Government. Pretty sure we know where leak is. Local TV calls it emergency. Also today, new forecast released. Most Fukushima nuclear particles will move east across Pacific. Narrow line of radioactive pollutants to make it all the way across ocean this year. Uses decades of data. Alrighty then. Well, it's Monday, one day down. One day down, four to go before the weekend. Winter storm hitting the east again. 
Heads up, winter storm. There's a cat up there on, on the left of my screen. What are you doing, boy? What you doing? What a kitty. What are you doing? All right. He's kind of edgy tonight. He must have. He was looking for the asteroid also. It's warmer today in Florida, and hope everyone's safe. Be prepared for anything, and I'll see you again tomorrow on the flip side. Alrighty then, stay tuned. And, and most of those now have been discovered. Something like 95% of those are now being tracked. Yes. I think most people are surprised at how many, however, do come in and do damage. I believe a home in North America is hit uh, once every two to three years on average. We know uh, in Weathersfield, Connecticut, we had in that same town, we had homes damaged by uh, meteors in 1982 and 1971. Uh, I know uh, I spoke to Bob and Wanda Donahue in, in Weathersfield after that event in November of 82. They said they heard the loudest sound they'd ever experienced coming from the next room they'd been watching tv mash I asked them what they were, were seeing mash on tv and they rushed to the next room and there was a hole in the ceiling and the furniture had been knocked over and uh, they called the police and it was firemen who came with the police that discovered it a uh, meteor that uh, was uh, almost 10 pounds in size and I asked them if their insurance covered it uh, what do you think uh, mark did their insurance cover them for the damage <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I don't know if me, it, 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 it did. It did. Uh, so they, they, don't, they don't have a meteorite clause. That, that, that insurance company probably has a meteorite clause now. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, uh, that's the question. Did they get to they, keep it? They got to keep it, and then they generously uh, donated it to a museum in uh, New Haven. But what was amazing, of course, is that previous time that a home in America had been um, had been damaged was in that same town of Weathersfield and the only explanation we have of course is that Weathersfield is a suburb of Hartford where all the insurance companies are you know that's where that's where the actuaries live they they know this thing can happen you know the town hitting being hit twice in a row so we do get houses that are struck oh, I still don't see anything but I'm trying to record it for you guys Indiana uh, 20 years ago. I wasn't sure how Long soon it would show up, was, so uh, sitting on his bike, not riding it, but the standard they're showing footage from Dubai. To his teenage friend when one went thump into the lawn, uh, right in front of We're waiting and watching, and, uh, but I don't see it. That so, an incoming bit of asteroid material is hot, the meteor is hot when they touch it. They were able to pick up this meteorite. And, and they reported that it was well, here's a bunch of talking about meteorites, but Monahans, Texas, and, uh, this is feed from Dubai, from, uh, Indiana. Oh, okay. and I, I, know well, that I don't see anything, so. Objects of this size, we're talking about six pounds, eight pounds, ten pounds. So I keep restarting this recording, so that they're hopefully to catch to something. something in the That's why I put the, uh, hour, which lets them typically penetrate a roof, often one additional floor, and then come and this to, is a different come to one. Rest. Whereas, if an object is, and then you don't just have a hole in the roof and um, a little bit of damage in your house, you have uh, you have a crater or or worse than that. We're looking now at SLU's coverage of Tutatis that we uh, tracked. Paul Cox, our technical director, was responsible for getting the SLU telescopes to do something that they weren't really designed to do, and that is uh, track these fast-moving objects. We see the stars, the streaks behind them, and I'm welcoming everybody who may be just joining us for our coverage of tonight's near-Earth encounter of the asteroid 2000 EM26. We're trying to reacquire it. It's been lost. That's a little creepy, a little scary, that an object that, that has been officially characterized as potentially hazardous has not been seen in its uh, further orbits around the sun. Now, it has an orbit of 269 <coughs> days, so it comes around uh, the sun in less than a year, and yet nobody can find it. So we're looking for it tonight, and NASA and the world is becoming more and more aware that it might be a good idea to track near-Earth objects, hazardous potential impactors, and uh, maybe have a chance to see them coming. What do you think of the idea, Mark, of uh, perhaps even spending the resources to develop a way to deflect 
uh, potentially mm. impacting objects, or do you think that's too low probability this. and too side from So they can't uh, find the three football s field size uh, near Earth object right now. So if I run out of footage, this is just some other one from 2012. But I'm letting it roll. Um, so you've got to find them long before There's impact. Another one. Um, now, I'd put a caveat on that. Um, I would say it's small if they're objects uh, the size of Chelyabinsk. They can't find them. Um, if that had been the discovered right now. in advance, uh -huh. well, then people could have been warned. And, and there could have been a, you know, take cover warning so that people wouldn't have been hurt by standing next to windows because they didn't know what it was. They were, they were surprised and, and they did what anybody probably naturally would do and that's to go to the window. But if they had been warned, they probably wouldn't have and it would have saved a lot of injuries. Or, uh, or open the window if you want to look at the sky, right? Don't well, I'd go outside, but, you know, we probably wouldn't know how big it was either. We wouldn't have time to really characterize it. And, and when you warn people, like the National Hurricane Center does, you kind of want to give them the worst-case scenario, and that might be, you know, don't go near a window and stay, stay indoors, go down in the basement, something like that. I, I'm not sure what the warning would be because I don't know what we would know or what we would have known. Um, if it was something that would be spectacular but harmless, except for maybe a big boom, then you probably want to tell people to watch it from outdoors so they don't get hit by glass and, and just be in an open area where nothing's going to fall on. Uh, okay, now to Paul Cox in, uh, in the Canary Islands. Paul? Yeah, you know, Bob, I, ju I just really wanted to give a, a little bit of a recap for anybody who's been joining us late. Uh, I'm talking to you from SLU's Canary Islands Observatory. We're iced up here, so we weren't able to bring you... Uh, images of 2000 EM26, this near-Earth asteroid, this potentially hazardous asteroid from the Canary Islands. But we've had some images coming in from our partners from the Dubai Astronomy Group. And they've been feeding us these images. And we're going to have to look at these really closely. Now, don't forget, this asteroid was found, was discovered in 2000. It had 32 observations over a period of nine days made of it, and then nothing. It made close approaches in 2002, 2003, 6, 9, 11, and 12, but nobody managed to recover this object. They couldn't find it again. And we're not talking about a small asteroid here. We're talking about an asteroid which is between four and 800 feet in diameter. This is not a small lump of space rock. And it was classed as potentially hazardous asteroid because of its size, because of its proximity to Earth and the passes it could make. So what we've been trying to do tonight is recover this extraordinary object that was discovered back in 2000. But what we also do here at SLU is members virtually every single night track newly discovered asteroids. These appear on the Minot Planet Center website. Um, and it's really asking. They ask, look, this thing's been discovered. Come and help us determine its orbit because we don't know it accurately. And unless we get more observations of it, like you're seeing now, these are all from the SLU telescopes. These are from our members in the SLU research group. And they perform measurements of it. They submit this information up to the Minor Planet Center. And that is what enables us to keep track of these dangerous objects. And what you're seeing here, a lot of these images, you'll see the name of them. Asteroids, they're named by the year they're discovered, the month and the week that they're discovered. So anything you're seeing here, this one here, 2014 BM3, BH3, this was only discovered a couple of weeks ago. But SLU members immediately start trying to track this thing. So it's not lost like the asteroid that we've been tracking tonight. So, Bob, back over to you. I, I hope that's kind of brought anybody up to speed who's joined us a little bit late. Yes, yes. And as long as you're... This near-Earth asteroid, this potentially hazardous asteroid, that's what it's classed as, discovered in 2000 and not observed since then. It's somewhere. It should be in that field. So we're going to have to look really, really closely at these images a little bit later to try and see if we can spot that moving dot against all of the other moving dots. That's right, and not um, too much of a moving dot. It's uh, about six times fainter than the planet Pluto, 
or the poor demoted, I should say, ex-planet Pluto uh, uh, is. So this is, uh, it's not a very bright object. We're talking about something that may be as large as three football fields, nine times farther from us than the moon. Far cry from those events of a year ago when we had uh, <laughs> two objects come in very close to Earth, one uh, visibly moving across the sky. They slew telescopes, barely able to track it. It was moving so frantically closer to us than our own Earth satellites, or at least our geostationary ones. And then a second object the same day, bursting 18 miles over the, uh, the city of Chelyabinsk in, uh, in Russia and injuring 1,500 people. So that we went in a single day a year ago, and we're commemorating that tonight, with this uh, passage of this new asteroid, we went from a single person having been injured, Ann Hodges, back in 1954, struck in the upper leg by a meteorite, to 1,500 people being um, injured by one. And it just shows that, uh, well, you never know, do you? Uh, before we close the show, I want to go back to uh, Dr. Mark uh, Boslow. Uh, any uh, last thoughts about the uh, these hazards and... Uh, what is your next project? What what do you intend to do with uh, studying the... Well, obviously, maybe it's so close that the... <laughs> maybe they're overshooting where it's going. That's what I'm thinking. If it's out there and they can't see it, maybe they're pointing too far out. Very interesting. All right. Well, I guess we wasted our time, kind of. Okay. I'll report this on the show. I'll put it at the end of my show. Because they're not showing any images. So I'm going to keep walking in and out of the house, too, to look up. Huh. All right. 